What's going on guys, I'm Scott and welcome to Fudge Muppet's brand new Fallout 4 Nuka World build. This is the Disciple. The Disciple is an emotionless executioner. She slaughters her enemies in cold blood, feeling no remorse in the process. The Disciple's obsession with revenge drives her to commit reprehensible sins, but unlike most psychopaths, her face gives nothing away. She'll visualize the gruesome demise of her foes without so much as a grin betraying her thoughts. She wastes no time with guns as shooting people takes all of the intimacy out of the kill. Instead, she uses stealth, a steady hand and a razor sharp blade to eliminate them while feeling every futile motion as they struggle to survive. This build benefits from a tactical approach using patience and foresight to land critical hits from the shadows, dealing massive damage. She's not much of a talker, so she lets her deadly arts do the talking. Before we get started, check out the timestamps in the description for all your video navigation needs and subscribe so you don't miss out on an absolutely huge video masterpiece we have coming soon. But first up, let's get to one of the best backstories on Fudge Muppet. The Disciple was born into a wealthy family in the Boston suburbs. Her parents were accomplished lawyers and intended to guide their only daughter down the same path. Her household valued intellectual accomplishment and spared little time for anything else. But the Disciple loved to draw from a young age. She loved wandering off with the other kids in her street to play and explore in the woods. She would find a spot of grass, nestling quietly among the trees so as not to disturb the delicate tranquility of untouched nature. She would wait until she blended seamlessly with the sway of the leaves, feeling in sync with her surroundings. And then she would sketch the plants and animals for hours on end. Obviously, her parents weren't approving of how she spent her free time and they began to worry that she wasn't dedicating enough time to her studies. She persevered with her schoolwork in order to appease her parents, but she wanted desperately to go to art school. They dismissed this possibility and struck down her hopes. The disciple in resigned acceptance complied and attained her law degree a few years later. After leaving university, the disciple had just about enough of being told what she could and could not do. She was passionate about art and shunned law in pursuit of her dream. Soon later, a glorious opportunity presented itself. An avant-garde art exhibition was taking place in Boston, inviting all new and aspiring artists to show off their talents for not only significant financial prospects, but also a central publicity in the industry. The coming together of renowned critics would be her greatest chance to pursue her dreams. The Disciple had worked tirelessly in preparation for the exhibition, creating a piece of work that she was overwhelmingly proud of. And when the day drew closer, she was confident hers was superior to the other entrance. There was only one that seemed up to her standard, and it was blatant that the prize was going to be one of them. The particular artist was a young blonde woman named Elaine, who had an expression of condescending superiority permanently plastered on her face. The animity between the two of them was clear, but neither attempted to address it. The big day came and the artist watched anxiously as the patrons, critics, and connoisseurs examined the pieces. When the pieces were revealed, the disciple immediately noticed that her work had been vandalized defamed by crude strokes of red paint. The painting was ruined and so too her chances of success. She veiled her anguish and turned to take refuge in the restroom, only to see her light-haired rival smirking arrogantly. The Disciple was certain this was her doing. Predictably, her rival's piece won and the Disciple's distress transformed into a cold rage. She had been humiliated and she tried desperately to hold her composure, at least until she could seek vengeance. Impulsively and ignoring her conscience, she followed Elaine from the venue into the bustling Boston city streets. It became clear that Elaine was heading out into the town to celebrate. The disciple trailed her using crowds to stay incognito. She waited until the opportune moment when Elaine was isolated and out of public sight before pulling her into a dark alleyway. She cornered the now terrified rival and revealed a knife from her coat sleeve. Emotionless, the disciple pounced, slicing Elaine's throat in one fluid motion. She acted coolly and quickly, somehow feeling no remorse despite the horror of her actions. She stopped only to dab the blood smears from her coat before walking back out onto the busy streets. As she walked past the bar Elaine had clearly been heading to, she noticed a handsome man sitting alone and looking concerned. She walked over to him and struck up a conversation. The man had been waiting for his date who had just won a prestigious art competition, but he thought that he had been stood up. The disciple comforted him, neglecting to mention the whereabouts of his mysteriously missing date, and the two ended up hitting it off. They soon fell in love, choosing to settle down in the serene suburbs of Sanctuary Hills. The disciple had taken control of her life by any means necessary, and that gave her an immense sense of satisfaction. But that was all about to be shaken up as the newly settled family 
were rushed to the safety of Vault 111. Upon leaving the vault, the disciple won't waste any energy grieving. She remembers the sadistic thrill of killing those who cross her in cold blood and plans to execute the same justice for Kellogg. The disciple will track him down as soon as possible and then will focus entirely on creating artistic chaos. She won't be interested in the petty squabbles of the main story factions and you can choose to deal with them however you like, generally opting for the most violent, ruthless approach possible. She has little interest in the railroad and their pursuit of social justice, so will have no trouble double crossing them if she is so inclined. Similarly, the motivations of the other factions fail to capture her interest. The disciple is an artist, blood is her paint, and the commonwealth is her canvas. Playing the factions against each other for the bloodiest outcome is the recommended strategy. The Disciple will thrive in Nuka World. She is a relentless killer unaffected by emotion, while Nuka World is a cruel cutthroat place, and she adores it. When she meets the Raider factions, she will side with the Disciples as their no-nonsense, bloodthirsty attitude appeals to her. The operators seem too influenced by greed, while the pack are too engrossed in their primitive hierarchy. The Disciple will eliminate the operators, but will elect to keep the pack happy. She'll do this in order to get everything she needs from them, especially the pack alpha perk, which will complement her up close and personal playstyle. Now that you know a little bit about who the Disciple is, let's take a look at her stats. When you start the game, her base special stats will be 9 Strength, 1 Perception, 1 Endurance, 3 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 9 Agility, and for luck. You'll want to chuck a bonus point from the special book into luck, and this way you can invest in the Idiot Savant perk as soon as possible, maximizing those sweet experience gains. The Disciple has no familiarity with firearms and is perfectly content with keeping it that way. Guns take the savor from killing, and ever since she snapped, she prefers to get her hands dirty. Her ability to land a killing blow with a knife and her lack of trepidation in the heat of the moment make her far stronger than she appears. With nine points of strength, the Disciple will always strike hard and true. Her next major asset is her agility. She is incredibly elegant and light on her feet, which may seem harmless to many, but this allows her to be clinical in her endeavor. As an artist, a deft touch is essential, and the Disciple is precise whether she's striking a canvas or a victim. In order to find the best locations to sketch as a child, she would count on her nimble movements to get close to animals without startling them. For this reason, she'll have an impressive nine points of agility. Next comes four points of luck. This stat will also be bolstered by four perk points and the special book bringing it to a base of nine before the bobblehead. The Disciple isn't the type to take continuous pot shots at her enemies. She favors careful preparation, biding her time until the most auspicious moment presents itself. And when it does, she utilizes the element of surprise. She relies on one hit to do the job, and as a result, that strike ought to be as critically deadly as possible. With nine points of luck, the Disciple is rewarded for her composure and patience in the form of devastation stating critical hits. So we have an understanding of the stats the Disciple excels in, but how will she put them to use when they're needed? Let's get into that now and have a look at her essential perks. First up from the strength stat line, we have Big Leagues. We know the Disciple is proficient with a blade, but with all five ranks of this perk, she'll deal double damage with melee weapons. On top of this, it gives her the chance to cripple opponents or even to showboat by decapitating them with a grand slam. In tandem with this, we have the Rooted perk. Taking two levels will ensure the Disciple's close proximity doesn't lead to a downfall. When standing still, you'll gain plus 50 damage resistance and all melee or unarmed attacks will deal 50% more damage. This way, the Disciple will stand her ground against all odds, turning her enemies into glorified pincushions when she pulls her blade on them. Lastly from the strength stat line is Blacksmith. The Disciple seldom feels threatened by anything life throws at her, and she faces the wasteland with an unnerving air of nonchalance. For this reason, she adapts well to her harsh surroundings and doesn't take long learning how to prosper. She quickly discovers how to get the best out of her blades, and with all ranks of blacksmith, she'll have access to all melee weapon modifications necessary. Charisma is hardly the Disciple's forte, she's more inclined to get straight to the point, and that point is the tip of her cutlass. But nevertheless, we suggest investing in the Lone Wanderer perk. As a stealthy operative, the Disciple would prefer not to have that jeopardized by clumsy companions. Taking all four ranks will offer an extra 100 pounds of carry weight, you take 30% less damage, and your damage output will be boosted by 25%. And thanks to the 
Far Harbor DLC, the fourth rank will provide an additional 25 action points. Next up is Agility. From this stat line, you'll want to build the Disciple's Stealth. As a melee-centric character, she would rather not be spotted from a distance. Firstly, taking all ranks of the Sneak perk will make her 50% harder to detect while sneaking, and on top of this, she won't trigger floor-based mines and traps, running won't adversely affect stealth, and engaging in stealth will cause distant enemies to lose her. To supplement this, you'll want to take all ranks of the Ninja perk. This will multiply your melee sneak attack damage by 10, making stealth a must for optimal results in combat. Also from agility, we have Action Girl. With this perk maxed, action points will regenerate 75% faster, vastly improving VAT's efficiency. This means VAT's will be a practical option on the battlefield, allowing the Disciple to be even more calculated in her strikes. To further add to the Disciple's VAT's viability, we recommend dropping two points into the Blitz perk. This will significantly extend VAT's melee distance, and the farther you lunge, the more catastrophic the outcome will be for the recipient. Last, but certainly not least, is luck. The stat line is all about pumping out crits left, right, and center, and also enhancing experience intake. As mentioned before, the Disciple's base luck will only be 5 with the special book, but putting 4 perk points into luck will bring it up to 9. With that in mind, you'll want to devote some points to Bloody Mess. This perk is enough of a treat simply for its aesthetics. As the Disciple dices up foes, she can bask in all the gory glory. But to sweeten the deal at max rank, all combat damage will be increased by 15%, and with a bit of fortune, enemies clustered together may explode one by one like distended dominoes when she lands the killing blows. Also from the luck stat line is Idiot Savant. This perk is best acquired early to maximize leveling. Once all three ranks are taken, you have a chance of randomly receiving five times XP from any action, and there's a chance that this bonus will trigger a times three XP multiplier for all kills for a short time. In other words, when the Disciple gets on a hot streak, you know it's time to slaughter every living thing in the vicinity. Keep in mind that this perk benefits from having low intelligence, so if you find yourself at the Boston Public Library, don't go borrowing any books. As for those delightful crits, you'll want to take the Better Criticals perk. At max rank, critical hits will dish out 2.5 times as much extra damage. Pretty straightforward, but extremely handy for your VATS playstyle. Following this up, you'll have the Critical Banker perk, so you'll never waste a critical hit again. At rank 4, you'll have the ability to save up 4 critical hits to be used in VATS when the time is right. And finally, from the Lux stat line comes 4-Leaf Clover. Once maxed out, you'll have a 14% chance of refilling your critical meter with each hit in VATS. Not including gear, but including bobbleheads, the Disciple's special stats will be 10 Strength, 2 Perception, 2 Endurance, 4 Charisma, 1 Intelligence, 10 Agility, and and 10 luck. It's important to note that you'll want to avoid picking up the intelligence bobblehead. Keeping intelligence at one will allow you to reap the most reward from the idiot savant perk. The disciple is a sadistic slayer and she doesn't try to hide that fact with sleazy suits and fancy fine wear. She'd rather dress practically than look pleasant and this makes her the perfect fit for the Disciple's aesthetic. Out of the gate, you'll want to get your hands on some of the strongest armor pieces you can and slap those on top of some road leathers. If it looks intimidating and provides combat protection, you can't go wrong. When you make it to Nuka World, however, replace that shoddy getup with the torn shirt and jeans. And over this, you'll want to wear the Disciple's cowl to look like a badass and show your allegiance to the Disciples. For the rest of your armor, we recommend using the operator's heavy chest, arms, and legs. Despite this being a Disciple's build, these pieces actually look a lot better for this build than Disciple's arms and leg pieces, and as you can see, they don't attract from the iconic headwear. As for weapons, before Nuka World, the goal is to find the best knife possible. One of these options is Pikmin's Blade. Not only is this suitable for the playstyle, but as a former artist, the Disciple is naturally intrigued by Pikmin's gallery, and exploring it early on fits her character. But when you reach Nuka World, the Disciple's Cutlass is a must-have. A fully upgraded Cutlass, or the legendary variant known as Throat Slicer, sold by Caitlin Alden at Nuka Town Market, will be a huge step up. For more information on just how powerful the Throat Slicer is, check out the short video we made on it. Link is in the description. In terms of additional equipment, there are a few beneficial items you can find in Nuka World that add some serious bang to this build. I know I said the Disciple steers clear of books at all times, but there are two new magazines you'll want to pick up. There are issues 2 and 5 of the Scav magazine. Issue 2 gives plus 25% damage to combat knives and switchblades, and yes, that does include the Disciple's Cutlass. This can be located in the hangar in the Nuka World junkyard. Issue 5, found near the theatre at Dry Rock Gulch, will grant plus 3 strength 
strength and endurance when you have less than 100 caps in your inventory. It goes without saying that you should aim to carry less than 100 caps when possible. Chems aren't essential for this build as you'll be dealing insane damage regardless, but the choice is yours there. After all, she was an artist, so she may be inclined to experiment. As we touched on before, the Disciple's sly combat approach benefits more from traveling alone, and with the Lone Wanderer perk, it's best to avoid adventuring with companions. As for settlements, similar to our other Nuka World Raider builds, the emphasis is on taking over settlements for the Disciples. She doesn't care about building and sustaining colonies. She's only out to wreak havoc and quench her thirst for blood. Well, there you have it, guys. Thanks for tuning in to another Fudge Muppet Fallout 4 Nuka World build. If you liked the Disciple, show us some love by giving the video a like and sharing it with your friends. If you're new to the channel, click to subscribe to get more content just like this. And as always, head down to the description to find timestamps for each section of this build, as well as links to our social media. Thank you very much again for watching. I've been Scott, and I'll nerd out with you all again very soon.